I was trying to use my mixer that I use for podcasting, and it obviously screwed things up. So oh, good. let's redo it. Okay. Welcome, friends. It's Mike and Deanna Mutzel here today. We're going to talk about carbohydrates. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm. How are you doing today? Doing good. Yeah. Good? Deanna good. went for a walk. How many uh, steps do you have so far? Mm, about uh, 10,000. 10,000. 10, so, so friends, 10,000 steps, and it's 8.30 a.m. on a Saturday. And smoggy because of yeah. smoke from Canada. There's a lot of fires in British yeah. Columbia right now. Unfortunately, we love British Columbia. Yeah. Okay, so if you're coming on, where are you from? How long have you been watching the channel? And what are your frustrations? Or do you have any positive feedback when it comes to carbohydrate cycling and keto? That's what we want to talk about today. But of course, we're here to take your questions. So talk about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, every Saturday morning, we have a theme discussion. And we like to follow that trajectory a little bit. But if you have questions that aren't related to that, then we're going to we're gonna follow the conversation that way. So uh, a lot of questions are coming in. Thanks for being here, guys. Really, really appreciate you, you coming on here. Um, David Peterson says, good, good. So audio is good. All right. Uh, so we get a first question here. I think that's Japanese or Chinese. I can't read their name. Uh, is there anything you can recommend what to eat uh, a keto meal in a day? Like how, you know, day in the life of being keto. Mm. Lots of recommendations. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about your breakfast recommendations. Like what do you recommend for breakfast? And I can maybe share some lunch because we want to get the balanced view, right, right, from the female and the male. So what okay. do you... Okay. Well, um, bre that's not really good to ask me, Mike, because I typically don't have breakfast. Sometimes. Okay, we'll just... But what, when what? I do, um, I, I, I'm an egg person, egg and avocado. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just low carb in the morning for sure. Mm -hmm. So a little coconut butter, raw coconut butter. Yeah. But some days you fast. Yeah, you, you don't I would have... say four days a week that I do uh, time-restricted feeding. Yeah. Which means? Uh, I start eating at 2 and I finish eating at around 7 o'clock, ideally. Mm -hmm. But I'll have coffee in the morning, maybe a little bit of whey protein. Um, it just depends on my workout schedule. So whey protein in the coffee that's fasting? In the coffee. Just a tiny bit. I don't know. Tiny bit. <clears throat> I got to call it. My BS detector is going up. So I think <laughs> fasting is fasting. <laughs> coffee, liquid, butter, liquid cream. Liquid diet. It's not fasting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's pretty interesting. So the questions uh, are coming in here. I want to make sure that, that we address all your questions. So Ajay says, hey, caught you today. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Um, nutritionist orthomolecular from Brazil. I love that we can stream this and communicate with people on different continents, different parts of the world, uh, South America and so forth. That's really, really cool. Um, okay, so Deanna was saying, you know, the question came in, if you guys are just hopping on about uh, what does a day look like when you're going keto? Mm -hmm. Now, I, you know, every day can vary a little bit, you know, based upon how much activity you do. You know, for example, last weekend, we did we have 30,000 steps or 25,000 steps? Like 25, 30. So we did a big hike, yeah. you know, and so on that day afterwards, we had a little bit more carbohydrates than normal. Mm -hmm. So the, the guys, the thing is, you know, a lot of people want the protocol, the recipe, the solution, like tell me exactly what to do, what to follow. But what we like to teach in our weight loss masterclass, the Keto Lean Masterclass and on this YouTube channel is not a regimented protocols you have to follow. It's a general thinking process, a paradigm, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 give you a template from which you can choose what to do based upon your body composition goals, how long you've been doing this, how long you've been fat adapted for, for example, how long you've been overweight, mm -hmm. and how active you are. And like we're going to talk about today, the season. So it's summer right now. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have like shots of our garden, but I have done other videos on that. If you look at the live channel archive, mm -hmm. but what's available in the garden for us to eat right now? Oh my gosh, kale, Swiss chard. Zucchini, cucumber, raspberries, raspberries, gooseberries. Yeah. Cilantro, so lots of herbs. a lot of carbohydrates. Yeah, yeah, a lot of carbs. All right. Stuff. So if we're trying to eat seasonally local and so forth, we're going to be having more carbohydrates this time of the year, right? right? Yeah. So that's the thing that we also want you guys to understand. Yeah. Um, okay. So with that being said, you know, what does a day look like? Well, it really depends on your activity levels on days and how much body fat you have to lose and how long you've been quote unquote fat or keto adapted. So what, what, what I would suggest is if you have weight to lose, you have blood sugar issues, you have head trauma, brain trauma, you know, things like that. These are applications that are really benefited by higher levels of blood ketones. Then I would suggest, you know, um, really cutting back on the carbohydrates. Now, why? So that you can get into your nutritional ketosis faster and experience all the benefits of the signaling properties of, of you know, beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate and other ketone bodies and so on. But if you're relatively fit, you have good blood sugar regulation, you don't have head trauma, brain trauma, anxiety, autism, you know, uh, pre-dementia, cognitive impairment, 
then you might benefit. You, you don't need to really slam down the carbohydrates. No. People can do well, you know, on that, and especially with, with when they're real food carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're, you know, that's kind of the theme here to talk about. So um, someone comes on and says, love your guys' videos, never watch live though. Hey, Rick, awesome. I really, really appreciate that. I'm sure you're a subscriber. Thanks for, for tuning in. Um, mm -hmm. Jerry says, um, I, I don't know that. So keto on fasting. So that's a really good question. Yeah. And just to, just to end the discussion on what to eat. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, our Keto Lean Masterclass, click the link here, guys. Mm -hmm. This is where we tell you exactly you know, what we're eating to stay fit year-round. And so mm -hmm. if you want to learn about that, $47, register before Wednesday, and you can hop on our next conference call. You have cheat sheets, you have access to our private Facebook group, and coaching. And so that's you know, where we teach people like, hey, a lot of bacon, a lot of butter, <laughs> a lot of pork rinds. Yeah, that, that might fit your macros, but Heavy it, cream. it's not necessarily healthy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Carrying on. Should we move on? We should move on. And there is actually a talk about heavy cream and dairy. Angie Kim, what are your thoughts on going dairy-free on keto? Um, let's, let's address mm. this one. Uh, Sorry, Angie. We'll get to that. Okay. We've been following your podcast for a year now. Really, really cool. Hello from Israel. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is, All over. YouTube is, is just amazing. Um, okay. So terminal cancer. So that's, if you go back and look, there's a vlog here. Um, so DRA, um, or nutritionist, orthomolecular from Brazil, I believe. Uh, great podcast uh, snippet with Patricia Dolly. So she did have a very invasive, uh, I think, was it, I can't remember, it was like a retinal cancer, cancer within the eye that was going to cause blindness. And she used, you know, a ketogenic diet for that. So it really depends on the type of cancer. So certain cancers respond very favorably to a ketogenic diet. Others, maybe not so much. So just keep that in mind. It's all biochemical individual, you know, if we want to think about it that way. Mm -hmm. So it's worth a try. Um, okay. So we get another question for Rick. Rick says carbs, PWO po post-workout, I believe. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? P PWO. Rick, what's PWO? Small insulin spike back in, uh, Back and kept by bedtime. Okay, how do I do it? Um, so Rick, you know there is some speculation about the post-workout insulin spike, whether or not it's needed. So there is some insulin-independent uptake of glucose in the post-workout window. Mm -hmm. So that being said, we both consume. What well, depends on like the type of workout you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. You don't really. I consume more carbs than yeah. you post-workout. Yeah, I just always have berries at night if I'm really craving something sweet. That's about it. I don't like add sweet potatoes or a bunch times. of like supplements just, with sugar. You don't? <laughs> or supplements Come on, with sugar. Dude. But like, yeah, turnips. I just don't really eat a lot of carbs after. Yeah. So to summarize, real food carbs are the yeah. best. Yeah. Turnips, sweet potatoes, butternut squash, yeah. acorn squash. Guys, what's in season? Eat mm -hmm. that. Yeah, in post season for sure. You know, when the squash has come out, you yeah. know, I'm definitely all over it. Zucchini is considered carbs all over that for sure. And we, so. we grow Tons monster. Of Check out our Instagram, Real Food Lab Metabolic Mike. We'll show you some behind the scenes of a garden. But yeah. so it really depends on the type of workout you did. Yeah. If you busted your butt and you worked out really, really hard, then yeah, and you're going for hypertrophy, mm -hmm. or your next training session is very, very soon after the last training session, then have more carbs. If not, you don't really need that much. Right. Just making sure the audio. Oh I man. Just also intuitively, you know, if you feel like you really want them, then have a little. Uh, yeah, keep keep chatting away because what I'm doing is um, <laughs> okay. testing, testing. Yeah, I just, I really, I think the whole deal is to eat intuitively, first um, and foremost. You know, not focusing testing, so testing. much on should eat I have carbs? Should I have carbs post workout? I mean, just listen to your body if you can. Oh my gosh, the wires in the way. Yeah, I know. I've been telling you that. I didn't know it was on screen. It's just swinging there like a clothesline. Oh my gosh, this no. is like so unprofessional. <laughs> Guys, I am sorry. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> Did you guys see Man, that? I, we have so many questions to get the to. The wire hanging there? Swinging it's in. still there. Oh, hopefully there's, there's a delay. It's okay. Yeah, there's a delay. It's kind of a nice little ad. <laughs> Why didn't anyone tell us the wire was hang, sort of dangling edgy. around sort of here? You guys got to mention that stuff. <laughs> All right, so, so hello from UK. Been watching you for two years. Thanks for that. I really, really am grateful for that, and I love the UK. Um, uh, you know, I think the greatest challenge is gut health. Uh, I have months off, you know, where I, where I have no, no dandruff or gut health issues. Sorry, I'm reading this from it's far away. Uh, and then boom, dandruff and even though it's still in the same. Okay. What do you think? Gut health is so, so important. Yeah. Okay. So, so here's yeah, the thing. Um, eating dietary fat requires healthy gut health mm -hmm. and obviously eating higher amounts of dietary fat is kind of a necessity to become 
you know, keto adapted, mm -hmm. right? So we got to focus on gut health. That, that's really, really key. And so that's my qualm with a lot of the quote unquote unhealthy paleo people that just focus on macros, pork, bacon, a right. bunch of stuff, because that's not necessarily congruent with healthy gut health. Might they lose a little bit of weight short term on that? They could be healthy forever. You know, everyone's so different. People smoke and drink and live to 95, right? We're, there's a lot of resiliency in the human body. Yeah. But gut health is so important. And, you know, not to you know, be overly promotional, but our Keelene Masterclass focuses on all the steps on gut health. So that's a key theme. The foods, focusing on low endotoxin foods, mm -hmm. focusing on different things that you can do in your diet to minimize endotoxin absorption. Endotoxin is really a harbinger for insulin resistance and leptin resistance and much more. And it's a, it's a real sign of aberrant gut health. Right. So I love that question. Mm -hmm. I think it was from Sammy. Uh, going back here, also any beneficial tips for fat loss during keto? Um, calories, workouts, techniques, fasting, fasting or tools? Fasting cardio, 100%. And time Expand. Explain yeah, yourself. Yeah, I think just the two things. <laughs> Mike. So, uh, fasted cardio in the morning off of ca and a little caffeine and time restricted feeding. So, a window definitely is my go to if I'm feeling a little off or we've been on vacay and we're kind of all over the globe. I mean, um, those are the two big things. Mm -hmm. Walking a lot, major, you know, activity, active all day. Walking. So, that non exercise associated thermogenesis, the NEAT. So like what Deanna was saying, like walking, being, being active, and then also getting into the gym. Right. So a oh, lot of people yeah. think that, well, as long as I get to the gym, everything's cool. Well, and I can sit all day and whatever. That's actually not true. What we found is like, you need between 15 and 20,000 steps per day right. to lose weight. Right. Okay. So when we think about keto adaptation, so this is addressing a question from Jerry's. If you guys are coming on, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. So why is it important to just increase your non-exercise associated thermogenesis that neat that walk in the gardening the moving around playing with your kids yeah. getting out there standing having a standing desk that's important because all the adaptation well not all a lot majority of the adaptations that occur when you become more fat adapted occur where within the liver and skeletal muscle mm -hmm. when you become more insulin sensitive from walking and exercise that's where you cause beneficial adaptations in the liver and skeletal muscle right so this exercise is a synergistic modality that will help you become a better fat burner. Mm -hmm. In fact, if we think about where do we oxidize or break down or burn fat, it's within muscle tissue. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously your brain uh, in a, you know, a fasted state or a prolonged fast or a very low blood sugar, low insulin, your, your brain will oxidize, you know, ketones and so forth. But when I'm talking bulk fat burning, it's within the guns. The guns. Can you do a gut, do a little oh flex gosh. action? Can you make me do this? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so just like playing more, you guys. Like keeping it simple. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be difficult. Just make time for play. We all work really hard. Um, there's never enough time in a day, but you just gotta make it. And playing meaning like paddle boarding if you have access to that, hiking, being outdoors, having fun. Exercise is supposed to be fun and it's very fat burning. Just all day long. All day long. So I quit your job and just this is Go as play. much as I'll sit today, right now, and I get antsy by the end of this. I'm ready to like sprint to the gym, but just, and it doesn't always have to be high intensity stuff either. You know, like sprinting back and forth. It just, just movement, just movement. Okay, so, so. Nika retracted her message, so we'll uh, ignore that. So okay. Jerry, did, did, did that help? You know. Obviously, in a 45-minute like live chat like this, we can't address every single little issue. Um, but trying to give you tips and, and understanding that, you know, kind of the big things you got to focus on is compressing that that eating window, getting exercise, mm -hmm. having a bolus of caffeine before you train because that will help to enhance ketogenesis, the formation of ketones, uh, and you know, dropping down the out of season high glycemic carbohydrates, and having carbohydrates commensurate with your activity level. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want lot more details, that's where we have the keto coaching class. Click the link here, the little I button, little card, and you can register an RSVP and, and have more questions, more answers, more Q&A, uh, over 25 videos that will explain what exercises to do, when to eat, how to eat, mm -hmm. you know, gut health, etc. So hopefully that helps. Hello from Germany. Awesome. I just love this. Okay. Um, I heard to reset leptin and hormones after being keto adapted for six to eight weeks. It is good to have carbs at night. Uh, if this is okay, so it's not necessary to have carbohydrates to reset leptin. You know, if you want to reset leptin, you just need to lose fat. Okay, so le I talk about this a lot in my book, Belly Fat Effect Friends. If you've read it or you've followed me for a while, um, we talk about leptin. Leptin is a what they call pleiotropic adipocytokine. It's a hormone released from fat tissue that, that has a lot of different things. And 
a uh, lot of different, it plays a lot of different roles within the body. Uh, and you mentioned interleukin-6 and so forth, and, and leptin can affect the inflammatory response. So one way to improve in, or leptin sensitivity is to minimize endotoxin absorption in your diet. So this is how poor gut health, poor fat absorption, poor fat dietary choices can lead to increased absorption of pro-inflammatory All right, I think we're back. Sorry, guys, we temporarily went away. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, I'm so sorry. All right. Oh okay, we're back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Gone again. I'm sorry. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we fix that. I don't know what's going on. Um, so uh, Carlos says, hard, I, having a hard time figuring out the optimal way to maintain gut health for sustained keto. This is a, a challenge, you know, and so we, we really tried to help you with this. That, that's kind of the purpose of our Keto Lean Masterclass, so that you're focusing on gut health and ketosis at the same time. Because that long-term sustainability when it comes to your overall, you know, physiologic health, mm -hmm. that's what's going to help you very from, from a long-term perspective. So, Carlos, um, you know, yeah, kombucha, apple cider vinegar, all that. I mean, that's like one small element of this whole spectrum of gut health. We're talking fermented foods. We're talking fiber. We're talking polyphenols. We're talking chewing your food while you're eating. We're talking eating within your body's circadian rhythm, not having late night snacks, exercise, stress reduction, meditation. Like there's a million factors that go into this whole gut health equation. So it's not like just having kombucha or apple cider vinegar. I, I, that would be so cool if it was that simple. Yeah, I know. Just take probiotics, have kombucha, apple cider vinegar, and it's you'd not. be good. Yeah. We're buffering again. Dude, dudes, what's up? I'm so sorry for um, for this. You know, next time we'll have to uh, we'll have to figure something out about that. Mm. All right. Uh, Shannon says, you guys are so great. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. That's we so are. Sweet. Are we? I think we're pretty cool. All right. If Deanna says it, Shannon says it, we, we are. All right, you guys are so great. Glad I finally uh, got to catch a live chat. Cool. Sorry for the buffering issue, Shannon. Thanks for sticking uh, through it here. Thank you for all the time and energy you invest in keeping everyone healthy and informed. Hey, Shannon, it's because people like you that subscribe, that hit that like button, uh, that comment, and that buy our courses. That's why we, we do this. We're, yeah. we're just trying to, yeah. just trying we're to grateful for you. Yes. That's it. Trying to give back. Mm -hmm. um, Jason says, do you have any fueling advice for endurance athletes? So endurance athletes benefit immensely, tremendously from a ketogenic diet. Keto, yeah. So go keto all the way, my man. Um, you want to tell the story about my bike race? Oh my goodness. The whole story or just like the short version? Yeah, the short version. Okay. You don't want to hear about our car breaking down on the way. So uh, yeah, Mike hadn't trained for what, like? Three years. Three and a half years. And does this bike race, what's it called again? Well, it was just a, a segment of the, uh, what is it called? Uh, um, ski to Sea. Yeah, Ski to Sea. And anyway, it's like this two and a half hour bike ride. He slams it. He was fasted. You maybe had a little bit of fat in the morning, right? I did have some fat for that. Yeah. So that was when you I did. You killed it. You were amazing. Yeah. I mean, n I'm not trying to brag at all. That's why when I had Deanna <laughs> do it. But it was funny. So all the adaptations that have occurred through right. years of doing this, this low carb ketogenic diet right. really benefited me for this bike race. Yeah, and so, you know, um, uh, one of the adaptations that occurs is monocarboxylate transporter and so forth uh, that helps to get ketones into you know the cells mm -hmm. also helps to get lactic acid out. So when you're doing events that are competitive and you're giving it all you have, you can buffer lactic acid better. Mm -hmm. So that's just one of, and obviously you're burning more fat for fuel and so you're not making as much lactic acid in the first place. But it was, you know, I don't think three or four years ago I could have done 56 mile bike race at high intensity you know, with groups, like we were spinning, you know, working together and stuff. I used to race very competitively and stuff like that. But so it was a really interesting, and I, I wasn't sore or very tired the next day. No. Um, you, you, you were full of energy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so there's like 350 people and I got like, I don't know, 90th place or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's, it wasn't like I won the thing or anything like that, but mm -hmm. I haven't even ridden my bike in three years. So anyway, so endurance athletes, to summarize, if you guys are just, you know, still here listening. Clean source of energy, fat. Yeah, uh, keto can really benefit from that. Sure. Um, Carlos says, thanks for the answer. Definitely factors to look into. Awesome. Now, that being said, so, so Carlos, towards the end of that race, I know that I was depleting my glycogen in my liver, mm -hmm. and it was very intense. Like, we were doing a lot of sprints, working together in the group. I did have dried fruit with me. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that you're 100%, you know, keto or this, right? When you, you don't have to be. Mm -hmm. you, you can 
eat, have your cake and eat it too, if, if that makes sense. You can be keto and then during training events that are very, very intense and short duration, like the sprints and stuff like that, where you're doing a lot of short duration, high intensity interval work, hills, whatever, you want those carbs on board. Okay, go for it. Which one do you want to read? So Thank Pat says, we question. can hear you. Cool, thanks Pat. Hello from Burbank, California. When considering the amount of carbs in a day, uh, what do you mean net carbs? You know, mm. okay, this, this really depends on how long you've been overweight, how long you've been insulin resistant, how mm. good, how healthy or unhealthy your liver is, how active or not active you are. There's a lot of variables. Some people will say under 20 grams a day. Some people uh, like us, we can have up to 80 grams per day, but if we have carbs around exercise, we can stay keto. Right. So I, I would love to give you like every single person, if you have this many grams of carbs, you're, carbs, you're well, that's good. that's why we don't count them, you guys, because you know back in the day when I did count macros, it was just disaster. It was um, almost stressful. Mm -hmm. I think it backfired on me. So I think, again, just intuitively, you know, and um, veggies don't count. One rule of thumb, you can't count veggies because of the fiber. And well, stuff. but some people Onions. then think that like sweet potatoes are a veggie. So when no, we're saying, okay, uh, let, let's, greens. let's qualify that a little bit. So, so right. green leafy green and leafy. or purple, right. you know, cabbage, things like that, like yeah. straight up vegetables that your mom want or your grandmother said, you can't leave dinner, you know, until you eat those I mean, vegetables. I wouldn't have like a big bowl of beets or anything or carrots, but you know, just yeah. like non, mainly dark non, greens. Non starchy carrots. vegetables. Charge the collars. Okay, um, so Clear Smoke 100 says, thoughts on long-term ketosis and carb ups for leptin levels. Uh, you know, focusing just on leptin, yeah, um, is a little myopic. We gotta focus on whole body health. If you listen, go back a little bit, Carlos, I don't know how long you've been watching, uh, or Clear Smoke, sorry, how long you've been watching. We just talked about leptin, just hit the rewind button about five minutes and we, we dove into leptin and gut health. Mm -hmm. um, hello again from London. Hey there from Santiago, Chile. Uh, are you familiar with the ASEA redox signaling molecules? Uh, I am familiar with redox signaling molecules, but I, I don't know what ASEA uh, is. So, yeah. Kelly, if you want to jump in and let me know, that'd be awesome. So, Jason says, Keto has improved my 50 mile race by two and a half hours. Holy. Nice. Oh my gosh. Damn. That's significant. That is legit. Jason, rock on. Uh, Dane says, So happy to see you live. Hey guys from London. Uh, Danae? Thalamus. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, Thanks for, for saying that. Thanks for being here. Okay, uh, so someone says, Mike, when I refeed car go ahead. Oh, sorry, Mike. I was, uh, I was when saying. I refeed carbs, I get exhausted for three days. So then change it up. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it if you don't feel good with it. Don't. Yeah, Just because the guru one. says, oh, every three yeah. days you got to do this, or every five days. Look, you are your own unique biochemistry, mm -hmm. epigenetics, mm -hmm. genetics, microbiome. You're unique. You're your right. own person. Okay. So do what works for you. Okay. Go ahead. Kelowna, BC. You know what, Shannon, how's the smoke up there? The smoke, we were just in Vancouver a few days ago and the smoke was horrendous. It's awful here today. I'm, in I, Seattle. I don't know can tell. I'm slightly out of it. It's just hazy and it really gets to, you know. I Is that from smoking stopped. weed or <laughs> the smoke? I don't smoke weed for the books, okay? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jason says again, uh, do you recommend low glycemic carbohydrates during training events and activities? Jason, I just talked about that uh, about two minutes ago. So um, when Training activities are very, very short in their intervals that are glycolytic. Look up the word glycolytic and see what that means. That means like short duration, high intensity. If you're doing glycolytic work for a long period of time or it's in a competitive event, I do recommend, I do, D-O, recommend carbohydrates. Yes. Okay. Um, um, veggies above ground or underground, is it Kerala? Um, you know, we just talked about that. I would say like above ground, just to be safe, you know, dark leafy greens that grow above the ground and things like the beets and the root vegetables. Yeah, definitely. They're important, but maybe just not like a huge, you know, yeah, it's not that's a good that. way to look at it though. Yeah, above yeah. and below. Yeah. It really is. So like celery root, celery yak. But they're above. all great. You know, there's, they're full of benefits and, you know, just a moderation. And seasonally consuming them yeah. and time appropriate consumption that's commensurate with your activity level. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those, those are like yeah. the three factors. Like exactly. it's not like carbs are bad, yeah. uh, right. you know, and why do you want to be keto? This is one thing we talk all about and, and help people identify in the Keto Lean Masterclass. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? Are you doing it because your coworker is or your boyfriend or your spouse is doing it? Mm -hmm. Or do you have a medical condition that warrants and would benefit and improve by beta hydroxybutyrate and other signaling properties induced through the ketones? Mm -hmm. So that's the thing you got to figure out. Just, don't just do it because everyone else is doing it. You need, because it takes a lot of commitment. Like this takes some serious commitment, trial and error. Sometimes your blood sugar is going to crash, etc. Mm -hmm. All right. Turmeric uh, and ginger, yes, please. We do it every day. Oh my gosh. We eat a ton of it. 
on a ton, but... Oh, yeah, and radishes. So that would be the other uh, below ground yeah, that's... Yeah, right, yeah right. radishes are lovely. Yeah. Uh, hey from Germany, on a cyclical keto, di cyclical keto diet, does time of day make a difference when refeeding? You know, I think just being consistent with the time of day that you're eating yeah. because, you know, there's just like light helps to entrain our body's biological rhythm, circadian rhythms, food intake, mm -hmm. talks, speaks to your gut clock and the circadian rhythm receptors in the gut and helps provide feedback to the master circadian rhythm system in the body. So check out the podcast with Alessandra Ferretti back in last August. We talk all about that. Um, so is gluconeogenesis a problem? Uh, gluconeogenesis is occurring if you're in ketosis. So no, it's not a problem. Is it a problem if you're eating 400 grams of protein per day? Maybe. Um, but there are certain cells and tissues within the body that can't utilize ketones, so therefore you need to have gluconeogenesis occurring. Supplements Re for healthy living. This, so we really strongly endorse the Zymja brand because we know the quality. They're, they're a wonderful company and right. we give a 15% discount to our Ketolean Masterclass members. So click the link if you want to learn more about this. But mm -hmm. what are some supplements that you just can't live without? Med packs, which okay. has got the whole, what's in that med pack? So you you said this that is, for me, Mike. yeah, this Amazing. is really neat. So, so we created like a keto pack, a, a pack that includes berberine, omega-3 fats. So this right here, guys. Um, a lot of goodies. Yeah, there. so uh, curcumin, curcuplex 95, which includes the turmeric essential oils and the uh, curcuminoids, vitamin D, diavask, which is really good for venous health, so to prevent varicose veins and so forth, yeah. uh, berberine hydrochloride, monoglyceride-based fish oils. So this is what we help our members try and figure out is instead of taking like a million pills, exogenous ketones and all this, like mm -hmm. focus on the supplements that have a lot of carryover that not only help you to modulate stress better, help you sleep better, help you balance your blood sugar better, help to reduce free radical oxidative stress. Like, so that's where it's like picking together different things and, and teaching people. But mm -hmm. one of the things that, that I highly recommend, this is a product actually, Relax Max, that we generally recommend to a lot of people, because yeah, it. it helps with deep sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, here's my aura ring, and I, I can verify that it really enhances deep sleep and REM sleep. But guess what? It also helps to improve insulin sensitivity. It also helps to improve female hormones. So too much estrogen imbalance <clears throat> and low androgens can affect your ability to keto adapt and burn fat for fuel. So that's an important component. So every night, what does Inez call it? Cherry drink. Cherry drink. We drink our cherry drink at yeah. night. So yeah. even it, it helps our good. daughter sleep. Yeah, yeah. delicious. Uh, um, seaweed. So that's oh. what we recommend, guys. So if you want to become a member, you can learn all about that. Uh, there's many, many great supplements. But berberine hydrochloride, monoglyceride-based fish oils, turmeric essential oils plus the turmeric root, so Curcuplex 95, and the Relax Max is one of my favorite, and branched-chain amino acids. What are your thoughts on seaweed, Mike? We, we talked about this, chlorophyll, et cetera, with you know, toxins and so forth. In moderation, yeah. I think so. I think, you know, I, I wish our oceans were cleaner than they are. Yeah. They're not. It's sad that we have to think about that, right? Yeah. So. Uh, is it normal to get cold hands and feet? Yes, it is. So, Huran, it is, totally is normal. Um, you know, because some people can, part of that, I, I've thought about the mechanisms here. You know, why is this? Well, one thing, and I've learned this from my friend Alessandro Ferretti and also Waco, is when you're burning fat for fuel, it, there's less heat kicking off. So your body temperature may go down a little bit mm -hmm. just from that sole purpose because all your little mitochondria and, you know, your liver and, uh, you know, your muscle tissue are kicking off less, less heat because they're more efficient. So that could be one reason. Mm -hmm. Also, it could be that you're just not eating enough calories. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it too. Uh, someone says bacon. All right, so bacon can be cool in moderation. Um, Roberta, check out Energy Bits and Spirulina for, okay, cool. So Dr. Jason Fung says that fat burning while fasting doesn't occur until after gluconeogenesis at around, um, that, that's not true. <laughs> Um, we, like, we loved his book, by the way, but... And I've interviewed him, too, he, the <laughs> video. But fat burning, uh, I don't know where that came from. I, you know, I've, I've spoke to, to you know, Dr. Fung at length about this in his office. Um, fat burning occurs all the time. Yeah. yeah maybe pro... Like, there is an inflection point after a certain... Ex Why are we buffering? There's an inflection point after 48 to 72 hours, depending upon the person, mm -hmm. where predominantly the body starts to utilize ketones way more than glucose for fuel. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that you have to fast for 40 hours before you're burning fat for fuel. Well, it depends on how much muscle you have too. I mean, there's a lot of factors And how involved. insulin sensitive you are. Right. Yeah. So a lot of, it's not, um, 
Yeah, I mean, so that that work that you may be referring to, uh, that purportedly Jason Fung mentioned or whatever, George Cahill wrote a paper back in, I think, 2002, a lot of that work on understanding like fat burning during starvation. Uh, so check that out. I, I actually was reading it the other day. Okay. Um, okay, so fatty liver on keto. Yeah, this is an interesting question. Um, very interesting. So you need good liver health to make ketones and burn fat for fuel. So if you have non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH, fatty liver, your liver enzymes are over 30, 32, 33 in the 40s, you may be better, and this is a few research papers, uh, you may do better on a high protein, low carb, you know, moderate fat. Yeah. That's what research shows. Moderate fat. Okay, plant lectins. Yeah, plant lectins. That's where we soak and sprout our... Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say something. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we <laughs> soak and sprout our seeds and nuts, right? Yes. Yes. Because it's warm water with a little sea salt, by the way, if you if you want to. Yeah. Know. We're working on a new course to teach you how to do healthy fats on a ketogenic diet. Oh, Super yes. pumped on that, guys. Um, okay. Got a few minutes. We gotta go to the gym pretty soon here. This is so fun to do this sort of stuff. So Shannon I says, Sorry, um, just, there's so many questions this morning, you guys. I just um, I can't help but to like be a deer in headlights right now, looking at the computer, but. This has been great. Um, okay, so Shannon says, when you do live events, are they only for healthcare practitioners? We'd we'll love to come and be a part of one and support what you do next time you're in Western okay. Canada. Shannon Wall, please send me an email, mike at highintensityhealth.com. We can talk more about that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let's see here. T -t 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 temperature, cold hands and feet, leukemia, seaweed, etc. cetera. What, what do you recommend for healthy living? Great those are Those are awesome questions, yeah, guys. so different. Um, I love it. Master class link not coming up. Oh, it's not? Oof, what's going on with that? Um, you know what? It's not. I see it. Okay, so master class link, check out the descriptions below. Or if you go to our other live videos, it's there. I'll make sure to post it. I, I thought the, the YouTube card was there. Um, it should be there. Yeah, it's, it should be there. Refresh your browser. It should be there. Um, okay. Uh, thanks, Jason. You guys are awesome. Intuitive eating, blah, 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 et cetera. Really good. Uh, how does the Keto Masterclass work? Do you purchase it? Um, yeah, it's just a one-time fee. That's what it is. It's $47. That price will change over time to a membership model, but right now it's just a one-time fee. Uh, and then we're going to go to a membership that's ongoing. But right now you get you know full access to the private Facebook group. We do every Thursday, we do a conference call. You can you know, send your questions in, mm -hmm. pre-record your questions into our SpeakPipe program, which you know then we can replay your question. People are digging it. You know, we're having a lot of like helping people to, you know, figure out is keto right for them? Mm -hmm. You know, the main things, you know, that they can do to become better fat burners. Woo! Yeah. Love it. <clears throat> so, oh, nice. can we eat berries on keto? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Oh, especially Again, in season. In season. Just like maybe like a, you know, handful. It doesn't have to be a big bowl of berries. Yeah. Right? To get the benefits of healthy keto. Uh, okay, so Carlos explained a little bit further and said, I think Dr. Fung was trying to make it simple for people to understand that the liver can be depleted of glycogen. Yeah, yeah, so that, so we definitely need the liver to be de depleted in glycogen. Yeah. It, that's one of several prerequisites to start making ketones. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. low uh, liver glycogen, that's why Deanna gets her, her steps, 10,000 steps first thing in the morning to really deplete that liver glycogen, deplete muscle glycogen. Right. Um, and that can help with fat burning to crank out those ketones, which have anti-aging properties and kind of mirror the metabolic signature associated with calorie restriction, which no one really wants to do, you know? Um, okay, you know, how do you dose your sodium intake? We don't count anything. Don't, I don't recommend you count calories, right. count carbs, count fat, don't count sodium. Be intuitive. There's no protocol. Right, just add some on your, add some salt. your salad dressing. If you're feeling thirsty, yeah. add more salt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. Hello from Thailand. I think that's the first person we've wow. had from Thailand. Oh, cool. I've awesome. Never been. We love oh, I, Asia. I, I would love to go to Thailand. Like yeah, we were just in Bali. Uh, about the zip lining's months. amazing there. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All well, right. friends, I think we're gonna go to the gym. I really appreciate it. If you if you're watching the replay and you're still listening, please yeah. give us this a thumbs up. Thumbs Subscribe up. to the and channel. Thank you guys for um, joining us live on a Saturday morning. We really really appreciate it and love it and love your questions. Yeah, These really are good great questions. questions. Um, any great. thoughts on type two diabetes, keto meal timing? Yeah. I mean, so there's a lot of stuff in there. Cortisol dysregulation. Yeah. So work with a functional medicine practitioner, watch all the podcasts if you want, uh, or join our Keolene masterclass. Cause we talk about that. Do you guys ever have a cheat day? Of course. Yeah. You know, but our cheat days are like 
probably healthy for most people, right? Just like McDonald's, Burger McDonald's, King. McDonald's, fries. No, like kombucha beer would be considered a cheat day for yeah. us. It's still pretty clean. Um, still pretty clean our cheat days. No donuts. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Rick. Thanks for being here. This is so fun. Um, uh, Bagoon says, I like eating natto, natto for keto. Yes, awesome. And spirimidine, uh, is this okay for keto? I don't know what that is. Um, thank you guys. Lee says, hello from BC. After long-term malnutrition and many symptoms of systemic illness, uh, health, uh, be too shocking for my body to go into ketogenic. Not at all. No. There's nothing abstract or weird or crazy about <laughs> being in a ketogenic just physiologic just eating, state. Yeah, just eating real food and unprocessed food altogether and exer upping your exercise may even get you closer to being keto adapted. Right? Yeah. Shannon says top three fats to, to consume. Uh, you know, a variety is good. Yeah. Avocado, coconut, and then soaked and sprouted nuts raw and nuts and seeds. Yeah. That's what we would suggest. And ghee butter is great if it's grass fed and you know it's not loaded with toxins. Um, so, Leah, just do it. Don't worry about Just see what happens. It may not work for you because if right. you've had a lot of past illness, yeah. there could be some underlying insulin resistance that's occurring potentially, right. and that can make things a little difficult. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we're going to sign off. Yeah. <laughs> Flock 3R says happy pumping. So we're going to go lift. What are we training today? What do you want to train? Have you done back yet this week? I could do it again. I love back twice a week. <laughs> and back, there's, a lot <laughs> of muscles, there's a lot of muscles there, so we yeah. can do that twice a week. So we're going to sign off, guys. Um, does your daughter eat anything you make? Not everything. We try to be a little crafty with that, and that's what we teach you in the Keto Lead Masterclass, how to yeah, do that. Right. Um, Eva says, so glad I caught you guys live. Yeah, Long Island, New York. We love New York. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you were here live. Um, from Thailand says, I wish to see you. Let me know if there's a chance. Yeah, I mean, we would love to do an event in Thailand. If you can uh, help to organize Keto Daddy, like send me a message, Mike at highintensityhealth.com. We would love to do that. Um, does your diet consist of, yeah, I mean, all I can't in, tell you all, all, of, all of everything that we eat. Sprinkle and salad type of thing, you know? I mean, just like olive oil. We don't overdo the olive oil either. You know, just drizzle on salad dressing a little bit. Sometimes we go no oil in salad dressing. So again, yeah. we're not going out of our way to add tons of fat into our nutrition. It's just because oil, even olive oil, yeah. can cause metabolic endotoxemia, cause you to absorb endotoxin. So, yeah. um, all right, friends, we're gonna sign off. Thanks so Thanks. much for Thank tuning you so in. Much. We'll have a good workout. Yeah. Catch you.